In order to come to the right conclusions from our sample data using our hypothesis test, it's going to be important that we begin by setting the problem up correctly. So we want to start by focusing on how we construct both the null and alternative hypotheses. So keep in mind, for one sample tests, the null hypothesis is always a statement that our population parameter is exactly equal to some specific value. So our proportion is 50%, the mean is 100, the median is 1,000, whatever that happens to be. The alternative, our alternative hypothesis then, is always a statement that our parameter somehow differs from that value stated in the null hypothesis. So what we want to do is set up a process for taking a claim that's given to us in a problem, translating that into both a null and alternative hypothesis. So in our first example, it's claimed that the mean weight of airline passengers is more than 195 pounds. We want to construct our null and alternative hypotheses. So the claim is that the mean weight is more than 195 pounds. So getting rid of some of the context there. The first thing that we want to do is take that claim and express it in symbolic form. So in this case, our claim is that mu, the population mean, is more than, so greater than 195. So we take that English expression, translate it into something in symbolic form. We also want to write the statement that's true whenever that claim is false. So essentially, we want the negation or the opposite of that statement. So if our population mean is not greater than 195, it has to be something less than or equal to 195. So the opposite of greater than just being anything less than or equal to that. Step three is to identify our null hypothesis. So HA, the null hypothesis, is going to be the one of those two statements with no equality component. So here, mu less than or equal to has that or equal to part. But our original statement, greater than, is a strict inequality. So our, null, our, our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 195. And then to generate the null hypothesis, h0 or h0, that's ha rewritten with an equal sign. So in this case, our null hypothesis would be that mu is exactly equal to 195. So this process has us generating the alternative hypothesis first, then getting the null hypothesis. But keep in mind, we always write that as the null hypothesis first, and then the alternative hypothesis under that. Because again, we're starting with the assumption with any test that that null hypothesis is true. It's also a good idea to keep in mind which of these hypotheses matches your original claim. So in this case, it's the alternative, but that won't always be the case. So let's look at a few examples. We want to basically repeat that process. For part A, the mean annual income of employees who took a stats course is greater than 60,000. So our claim is that mu is greater than 60,000. The negation of that, or the opposite of that, would be that the mean is actually 60,000 or less. So we look at whichever statement has the strict inequality or has no equality to it. So in this case, the alternative is that mu is greater than 60,000. And to get our null hypothesis, we take that exact same statement, but just rewrite it with an equal sign. And again, in this case, the claim ended up becoming the alternative hypothesis. So that will be common, but not necessarily always the case. In part B, if the proportion of people ages 18 to 25 that currently use illicit drugs is 20%. So we have a claim about a proportion this time around. So the claim is that P is exactly equal to 0 0.2. So we need the negation of that. The negation or the opposite of equal to means that the proportion is anything besides 0 
so p is not equal to 0 0.2. So we take the statement with no equality to become the alternative statement. So we get p not equal to 0 0.2, and our null hypothesis becomes p equals 0 0.2. So in this case, our original claim was p equals 0.2. Our null is that p equals 0.2. So in this case, our null hypothesis is the statement that matches the original claim. So the claim doesn't necessarily become the alternative. Oftentimes it will, but not necessarily. In part C, the majority of college students have credit cards. So the majority comes back to this idea of the proportion being greater than 50%, so the negation of that being less than or equal to 50%. That makes our alternative hypothesis p greater than 0 0.5, and the null is that p is equal to 0 0.5. And in this case, it's the alternative hypothesis that matches that original claim. So one last example of setting up these hypotheses. Median overall score of students in this class is different than 75%. So we're talking about the median, so our parameter is m, and we're saying it's different than 75%, so it could be smaller, could be larger. So we would use simply a not equal to symbol. So the median is not equal to 75%, or since it's a percentage, maybe we should call that 0.75. So the negation of that statement, or the opposite statement, would be that the mean is exactly 75%, or I'm sorry, the median is exactly 75%. So our alternative hypothesis is that the median is not 75%. The null is that the median is exactly 75%. And here it's our alternative hypothesis again that matches that original claim. So we need to make sure we get some practice with this, because if we start with the wrong hypotheses, that's going to throw off all of the results from the rest of our tests. It's going to uh, lead us to some incorrect conclusions. So the homework will give you some practice with this, but you want to make sure you start to feel more comfortable with this process of setting up these two statements. You don't always have to go through the process of writing out the claim and negation like this, but early on in the process that can be helpful for just identifying what these two statements should end up being.